My name is Ross and this is my wife Sam. We moved to Australia three and a half years ago and we made a lot of mistakes in the process. So that you can learn from our mistakes or just be a nosy perv and see what went wrong, here are 10 mistakes that almost ruined our move to Australia. So the first mistake I think that we made moving to Australia was we didn't really budget for how much our cost of living and how much things would cost when we moved here, which means okay. nothing to you because you no. never deal with money. No, I, I was not involved in that stuff side of stuff at all, well, so I can't really... So I guess that's one obvious problem, that if one of you is the person that mainly deals with money, then the other one should have a bit more of a... Understanding? That would help. <laughs> but I remember when we were looking at moving over here, probably it was because of the fact that we moved in COVID and everything was so rush, rush, rush. The main goal for us was just moving here. Just getting here, yeah. Rather than thinking to ourselves, how much is this gonna cost? How much is that gonna cost? What, mm. what are we going to do in the case that we don't have a job? I just thought to myself, no, we need to get here and it will cost whatever it costs. I think that was the cloud for us. Mm. Well, time was ticking, wasn't it? And it was getting closer and closer to December. And all I remember you saying is we need to get there. We need to get there because we have to enter Australia for such and such date in December. Yeah, that's when our year of, year of entry on the visa was up. Yeah, and yeah, between April and September when we actually moved, quite long, wasn't it? Yeah. I think having a budget though for people and knowing, not necessarily exactly because things change, but we didn't even know how much rentals were going to cost. That was what I was looking at while we were in hotel quarantine. If you have a, a stronger idea of exactly how much things are going to cost you, and we never had anything to kind of reference it from either. No. We, there was no one to, to watch. There was no one to, to check these kind of prices. That's going to save a lot of stress, I think on couples, families when they get here and they start to realise that yes, the cost of living in Australia isn't cheap, but there are some ways that you can perhaps, or some compromises that you can make to, especially in the first few months, you don't need to live as expensively as you think you do. But I would say the one good thing about being in the quarantine was we had that time, mm. didn't we, to, yes, it was expensive because we had to pay for the quarantine, but was that cheaper than paying rent? For two I don't weeks? think it would have been much cheaper than just no. renting or finding like an Airbnb. But it allowed us to, and allowed you to, look for places, look for jobs, didn't it? Yeah, like, I did I did a crash course in <laughs> budgeting in two weeks because I had nothing else to do, do while setting yeah, up as well. Yeah, exactly. I guess that kind of moves on to our second one, really, which is things in Australia take longer to process, or perhaps it's not necessarily just because it's Australia, but things will take longer to process here than you think. You won't be able to just get in and do things straight away. Weirdly enough, I can't think of something that's faster here off the top of my head sorting out your banks medicare tax file numbers is probably the quickest one that you can do but all of those things take time when you first move here so i think we should have planned to have a longer period of time setting ourselves up because you've got to kind of remember it's a stressful thing and to remove some of that stress having time off with you and the family and just being able to acclimatize as well as having to sort out all of the life ads in. I think that's something that we didn't do. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> We had um, we had two weeks in the quarantine, yeah. and which was forced on us, but we couldn't really go out and do stuff. It was more computer-based doing things. But we also couldn't start applying for Medicare and all that kind of stuff because we didn't have a bank card. Or we couldn't get a bank card because we didn't have an address. Yeah. Like, it was just... Ugh, yeah, I remember they feed that. into each other <laughs> yeah. as well. So when you come here, plan... I, what would you say is the minimum amount of time that you should have off before you start work? Start I'd probably your say give yourself a month. Month is a minimum. Yeah. I and what did say. we have? We had two weeks in quarantine. And then I started work. And then you work. pretty much started part-time work, didn't you? Yeah, we got out on like the Wednesday and by the Monday I was back. In, oh no, the Tuesday I was back in work because thanks to the Queen's holiday. Oh yeah. Or Queen's birthday holiday. Did you get paid for that? Yeah. Oh. Oh, nah, nah, cheeky gits. Now they started oh. me on the Tuesday. Oh. 
Mm, Not on a Monday, okay. obviously. That's one bank holiday I never <laughs> yeah. got. Now this one is, I think, something that's big for you now with how you think about the seasons. When we first thought about moving to Australia, we didn't do any research on how different the climates were in all of the different areas. Mm -hmm. Would you have wanted to move to Brisbane had you known how hot our summers are? Well, that's tricky because I can't say what the summers are like in Melbourne and Perth. And mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I can't really compare it now because I've never been to them places. But the summer is bloody hot. Yeah. It is so hot. It's the humidity, that feeling of being stuck sticky and wet like I hate I hate it I really hate it you you're okay with it you're used to it you've been in it since you were you know born so you kind of grown up knowing what you know, warm what feels warm, like yeah feels like and if you have a tight ass like a husband who won't let me put the air con on and stuff you like... can have it on when the sun's out because <laughs> of the solar <laughs> Yeah, now I, I, everyone kind of does just stay in in the summer, don't yeah. they? In the air cons and the shopping centres because it's pool. just... Or the pool, yeah. It's just so hot. You have to change your lifestyle for it. Mm. But I think we completely overlooked how different climates are in Australia. Mm. And I think people come here think with the mindset that, ah, oh, it's warm, it's that's warm. good, that's what I want. I think probably this is one of the good sides for Perth from what I hear in the sense of the weather. Yes, it does get really, really hot, but it's more of a dry heat, which is, you, you can cope with it more, particularly as someone that's come from the UK. The the humidity is, is really the bit that quite stifles you. And we, I, we just didn't really realise it. We just assumed it would be switched around the seasons yeah and that was probably be about as be far as yeah hot, I, but you don't really think <laughs> i do remember looking a couple of times how hot is brisbane at different parts of the year but it would be kind of just carefree looking on a weather app and i'd just note to myself oh yeah it's warmer in brisbane and and just using it as kind of inspiration oh mm. it's warmer in brisbane rather than being three degrees where we are right now yeah. but not really looking at other factors so do before before you move somewhere, either choose to live there for a little bit to test it out um, and to see what the climate is like. Because if it isn't for you, there's lots of places in Australia that will suit what it yeah. is that you want. And now that we've bought a house here, you're kind of stuck, aren't you? Yeah. People say to me, Sam, why did you move to Queensland if you don't like the heat? I do like the heat, but I'm like Goldilocks. I don't like yeah. it cold. I don't like it hot. So I just like it in the middle and yeah. I'm happy. But, um... Unfortunately, <laughs> most of the time, yeah. you know, you think summer is three months of the year and probably not every single day of summer is absolutely just unbearable. There's a few bits when it gets really, really warm that you just think, whoa. But for most of the year, mm. for, for more than 50%, I'd say the weather here is pretty perfect. Comfy, yeah. You know, the winters are actually quite nice. Mm. And then, you know, you do like to have, put a little bit of a jacket on and stuff, which we can do in the winter. So it's not and that's something that's completely overlooked as well yeah. <laughs> didn't realize australia got cold now something else that we didn't look into because we didn't know is all of the i'd say not localized laws but little laws that we didn't realize were laws and that hit us pretty quick didn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't even think we'd we'd got into our rental we were still in an airbnb no we were still in an airbnb <laughs> this was days absent just yeah. days of being let out in australia in your in our nice red holden no nah, that was what i had this we were still in the rental car the white oh. toyota camry oh not the yellow no we hadn't quite got the yellow one that oh, was after okay. the white oh. this was again how quick oh, we were already there oh yeah the one we got when we came out of quarantine yep okay and <laughs> turns out in australia you can't just park whatever direction you want mm. now australians watching this will be like what are you on about mate you have to park in the same direction of the traffic. That's the law. We don't do that in the UK. No. Or if it is a law, no one does anything about it. And very quickly, I, I reckon I had parked carefree probably about half a dozen times. Yeah. That's how quickly you get ticketed. Yeah. And how much was it? It was quite a lot because you, yeah, you used a few. It was... Fs. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably about... It wasn't quite a hundred dollars because that was what oh, we got done in the Gold Coast. Oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I'm, I've never got done speeding, have I, Mamp? Mm, I have. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> they're good at catching you for speeding, even really if you're a little bit you. over. <laughs> That's another one. Um, don't speed in Australia, otherwise you're going to get fined. And it's even and they are everywhere. I cannot get over. Like they've obviously got nothing better to do here. They hide in bushes. They yep. hide behind a tree. Like you just you cannot go over the limit. And and I still say now I still struggle with that conversion. 
mile of now to miles kilometer. to kilometers. I feel like I'm going like a blinking snail. Like I feel like I'm going so slow. We, you um, kind of are. But... Yeah, but like, I've just not got used to that. Yeah. Like I've just, I still find it. I'm constantly watching my what's it called? Odometer. Odometer. Yeah, I'm constantly watching it all the time because I, you know, it's Paranoid. a fifty or a sixty, and I'm really like, wow, come on, come on. I just want to put my foot down. Yeah. And I can't. You I, can't. Think, <laughs> I think in some states though they have laws about they can't really hide or they've got to put a sign out to let you know that there's going to be some people there which kind of seems a bit nice but another one is that you on like public holidays if you get done speeding yeah, you get like, double points yeah. or if you get done speeding in i can't remember how quickly the period of time is but if you get done speeding for the same thing again mm -hmm. then you get even more points yeah. so they are out to get you you have to be a very slow driver to come to yeah. australia if you're a boy racer nah, you're not gonna have your license you won't no. <laughs> no you won't but when i did get done like it just proves because i was doing bang on 60 yeah in a 50 yeah. like i wasn't over by you know 62 or six. it was bang on because i thought that area was, was a, 60. a 60 yeah so i know yes they, it's my fault I've they also no move to places where it does fluctuate from a 60 to a yes. 50 and you don't even really notice it because the sign so and yeah. that's quite big here yeah it really you know you could just go to the end of our road and it's changed to the next one and yeah. it's just, like it's constantly changing Engine. Yeah, so um, just be aware of it because we mm. we weren't. Oh, and uh, not all parking spots are free. That was my hundred dollar fine in the Gold Coast. Turns out we did have free parking, but you had to put your license into a little machine first. And then when I looked around, the <laughs> machines were fricking everywhere. Just wasn't used just, to it. I, I would also say as well to get like a, a book on road laws <laughs> or do a course in. We've passed our test though, yeah, mate. I know, but I feel if I was starting again, I would want to do not like a pass or fail, but just like a theory on Australian road. Maybe I, I would. Maybe I'll make a video on it one day. Maybe not you, but it's just things you you don't know, like the whole jaywalking. You know, I'm st oh the crossing at the school. Oh, it's already driving me potty. Why? I stand there for ages because they won't. The lollipop lady won't go onto the road because there's a bus. Yeah, they can't stop at the, the buses, other mate. end of the road. If they see a bus, they can't. Yeah, come but out. oh, it's just ridiculous. But apparently, it's a thing. Yeah, and don't don't you have to walk between the posts? Yeah, I got and told don't off cross for that. the line before they blow the little whistle. Oh my god. Oh, Tell you what, tedious. I literally <laughs> cross it the other end of the road now, in front of cars, behind cars, because I'm fed up of standing there waiting like a lemon because well, it makes me late. You're putting yourself at risk. Oh, it's just I can't get over some of the rules. Aussies love following rules. But on the good, on the good, um, good rules is parking is either free or yeah. quite cheap and reasonable, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Except in the popular spots, you don't yeah. expect to get free parking at Bondi, mate. Now we live in Brisbane, and I I do love where we live. I think it's probably the best place that we've lived in in our lives. We've only lived in two places. Well, that you have. We, yeah, we've you, upgraded. We've we, moved around quite a bit, haven't you? Yeah, just do. <laughs> we've definitely upgraded, but I think that we overlooked regional areas in Australia, in the sense of away from the big cities. Didn't move to Sydney because we couldn't afford it. Didn't move to Melbourne because we couldn't afford it. Now that the Brisbane Olympics and stuff has been announced, I don't know how we could afford Brisbane sometimes. Mm. Definitely places like Newcastle, which I know isn't necessarily cheap either, but we didn't really look at those. Just places that are close to the bigger cities, but not necessarily directly in the bigger cities. Central Coast, New South Wales, never really looked at that. I think particularly for people who want an Australian lifestyle, don't want the busy Australian lifestyle of being in a city, which we don't really no. need. Or want or like, we don't like that, do we? No, really. No. We never liked London, really. Yeah, just enough mm. stuff for us we we just never looked at it mm. and i think it was because of a focus on a job well that's it it was the main priority was to get you a job mm. and we had to basically be near your job yeah so it was the job that decided on roughly the area we were gonna live yeah but especially as as a teacher and i know if you are moving here and you have a profession that it really is in demand i didn't realize how easy it would be to get a job for me as the the kind mm. of the main mm. visa applicant and the main breadwinner don't let that hold you back in the sense 
sense of I have to live in a big metropolitan area. No, because we can just hop on the train, can't we? And mm. if you do need to be in the city. Mm. Yeah, but we're not regional. No, but it, like if people have jobs that are going to be in the city, yeah. don't think you have to be living right near the city because yeah. the trains here are so much better. Yeah, it does get worse as you move further out. Yeah. And I guess it depends on what you define as regional. If you're going to say like really regional, like Central Coast, New South Wales, it is further apart or just mm. living out a further afield from the, the main city areas houses are going to get cheaper you don't have to live directly in the city but like most things try it out i guess before if you're not quite sure now this one is probably something which we're both guilty of yep I'm going to say you more so than me because I found that moving to Australia was a, as a good thing in the sense of trying to declutter your life, live a little bit more minimalist, not have to have so many things. But one big mistake that we made moving to Australia was how much we brought with us. Yeah. And I don't think we needed to bring half as much. No, I don't either. Did, I we, did we need a move cube? I don't know. I sometimes also think to ourselves, some of the things that we didn't bring, perhaps we could have brought. But it's mainly memory things, isn't it? Mm. Bring with you your memory stuff, yeah. the stuff that cannot be replaced, but also assume that everything else, anything else can be replaced, if you want to as well. Because I get, I think, some of the stuff that we have replaced, we, we don't even really need. No. We have too much clutter in this house. I know. <laughs> I like a minimal house too, I, and I'm trying, but we do have two young children. We yeah. do have two young girls. Our house is, is very, very busy, lived, lived in. in We've got a dog that's mental, you know, does his own thing. He doesn't care what you say to him. He just answers you back. So it's like having another child. Yeah. Um, I love that dog. It's hard to keep on top of the house. And I, I, like I do say, the house is big. We're not we're yeah. not used to the size of this house compared to the what we had Size of Australian in houses. Yeah, just you just um, feel compelled to have to fill the space. Yeah, it looks sometimes. kind of looks a bit weird when you don't have stuff in the space. Yeah, maybe we'll have a not a spring clean because it's not spring when it comes to Easter, but let's have a let's have a day of <laughs> an autumn clean. autumn declutter clean. <laughs> but so. we need to make use of some of our. We don't have many cupboards and many much storage, really. Mm. But the garage, I'm sorry, but that's all you and it's horrendous yes. in there. Yes. And we could use that so much more, have it be nice and clean and tidy and everything has space. Um, the downstairs cupboard under the stairs, yeah, that, that is just horrendous. No? It's just base that. Yeah. I, I, I still think we need to throw out stuff. And when yeah. we do those bits, there will still be so much stuff that we brought from England. Mm. And we've been here for three and a half years. And I'll look at it and go, I've not used... What's that thing that they say? If you've not used it in a year, get rid of it. Mm. There'll be stuff in there that we've brought from the UK I haven't used in three and a half years. It's going to go. Going to go down and tip. Okay. If our story has inspired you to move to Australia or you're in the early stages of moving over and you don't know where to start, then you'll need to find out if you even qualify for a visa. Australia is one of those pesky countries that doesn't just let anyone in and realistically the whole moving process was probably one of the hardest things that I've ever done in my life. To help you out and plan what you need to do next, speak to our friends True Blue Migration Services and when you mention us, let them do the hard work of navigating the ever-changing Australian visa system and use their free visa assessment service so they can tell you exactly what you need to do to realise your dreams down under. As the only Mara registered visa company we trust, and we're not the only ones as they have hundreds of five-star Google reviews. You can even check them out if you need help falling asleep. In fact, they're so slick that if you decide to use them, they'll pretty much do all of the hard work for you in securing your visa for you and your family to live their best life. So what are you waiting for? Now this one is mainly for you and I, mm, yeah, no, I definitely regret it because it makes your life a hell of a lot easier. And if your life is easier, then my life is easier. I think we did overlook job prospects for you. Like what are you going to do yep. for work? I mean, don't get me wrong, we're f in a fortunate position whereby because Australia pays teachers so much more that you don't have to work as much, which is a good thing. Yeah. But we, yeah, for us, it was just what jobs can Ross get? Yeah. What can he work in? What are his prospects? And then we I just assumed, around. oh, you'll get a job. Even doing what you used to do. So you, you used to be a, a teaching assistant in a special mm. school. Mm. Even to do that in Australia, there's more hoops and things that yeah. you need to jump through and it isn't yeah. a direct transition for you, is it? No, no, no. Like, I, you know, I got a, a diploma while I was at the, at the special school and um, some places over here are accepting that, some aren't. Some are now saying to me, 
you need to study the Australian equivalent. So even though I have the qualification, it's not recognised. It's not with all companies. Yeah. No, it, it's down to the companies. So the company I work for that I've been with for three years, they were fine with it. They took me straight on, no problem. I've applied for a few others um, just to gain some more hours and they're saying, oh, we would really like you to do your Cert 3 even though you are already qualified. Um, but now you've got it. The, um, yeah, so the... Um, the NDI is changing and actually to be a support worker in Australia you don't need any form of qualification no. at the moment but I don't know when it's coming in but it is going to be coming in that you need the Cert 3 in individual support to be a support worker mm. so I just thought okay well I'll just do that and um, I did it from home didn't I yeah. and I got my qualification through in February um, for the Cert 3 that was pretty easy it was government funded so I think it only cost me about 50 dollars mm. like it was nothing you know yeah. just to have that qualification but i think people do overlook how many qualifications you do need to do things in australia they don't something again disability mm. support work is one way you can do it without qualifications the more qualifications you get the higher you move up the pay structure but people just assume particularly from the uk and it's the same with the english test oh, i can speak english so i don't need to prove it well then you're going to get less points on your visa mate to work in certain things are oh, because i'm qualified in the uk or i have a qualification or even just i did it in the UK that I can automatically do it in Australia and yeah. it just isn't the case no. as a teacher I'm really fortunate because it's a university degree they recognize well even they don't recognize some of it in the UK three-year trained teachers they don't accept you have to be four years the equivalent in Australia because of the hoops that I kind of jumped through to get mm. all of my stuff verified yeah. we just completely forgot about you yeah. and then you come here and you're like oh yeah no again I don't know why I was surprised by it but yeah. your qualifications and experience that you had wasn't directly recognized so do look into the partner what can they do are yeah. they qualified to do it and don't assume straight away that they mm. can just yeah true because I did try and apply to work in special schools when I first moved over here and they were saying well you know you kind of need to do voluntary work first and I was like well I can't I've yeah. got a family I can't do voluntary work like I have a qualification why do I need to do voluntary work you know but didn't recognize it mate now this one again I think is down to the fact that everything was a rush to try and get to Australia and we did didn't look into it probably because it was all just so stressful moving here anyway but we neglected the mental preparation that you need to transport your life from one side of the world to another now this is probably not just specific to australia this is to do with it moving your life anywhere what do they say something like the most stressful times in your life one of them if not the most stressful one is moving and we just completely forgot about how it would affect yeah. us as individuals yeah. us together i mean thankfully i don't think it's been too negative no. but it, it is a stress and it is gonna have bad yeah. repercussions and you're gonna have to kind of work through it and i don't really think there's any specific advice that we could give for people other than it's gonna happen like it's gonna be stressful you're gonna find yourself stressed at times just be aware of it and i uh, would well communication is the only yeah. piece of advice we can give what was the most stressful bit for you i think just it's going to be different for other people because they haven't got to deal with the covid but it was okay we're on this flight now mm. let's get ready off we go we have a party to say goodbye we get kicked off oh no we're back now yeah it was that i hated that you're going oh no you're not you're going oh no you're not like that was quite stressful well that's i mean and I we were living at my parents as well weren't yeah. we as well well <laughs> i speak to lots of people about how do you say goodbye to people when you move and I think for me because we were in COVID lockdowns and I was able to just kind of put that in a box and shove it away because we never really kind of did it properly whereas for you that that's important you know mm. being able to have that closure and saying goodbye to people whereas me I'm like mate where's my beer I'm gonna sit on a plane and I'll deal with that but as I've got older I don't really like doing goodbyes anymore mm. it's too much for me I don't you know I just kind of say all right I'll see you soon you know like when um dad and Karen came here and they left to go back to the airport I I didn't go yeah. because I knew it would be too hard for me it'd be too hard for Aurora yeah so we just said goodbye see you soon from home I mean I still cried of course I did mm. I think the whole going to the airport with the per people you don't want to say goodbye to yeah. is hard you're better off I think just getting a taxi mm. or uh, getting a friend to drop you off not me. your closest person really yeah I, I would say for me I would say that yeah like watching my dad and 
my brother like booing their eyes out at the airport like was really hard for me to just suck up and go like yeah. it was and I would have preferred not to have had that because we were already stressing about were we going to be getting on this flight or not weren't we do you I, remember that yeah <laughs> I think you just need to know that it is going to be a really stressful thing mm. unless you've done it before you're not going to know what your triggers are going to be mm. triggers are going to be different for everyone and then you've just got to ride it out you've just got to live that experience know that it's going to make you a better person know what to do if it happens again to kind of mitigate and minimize it all but don't let that yeah. the stresses when they come be the reason why oh, you know, I'm going to jack all of this in and I'm going to move back because you can overcome them now this one I think after that deep and meaningful bit before is hilarious and if I ask you you probably still do it but when you move to Australia don't make the mistake of converting every price for everything that you get back into UK money mm -hmm. and comparing the price of how much things cost all you the time you still do it don't you yeah <laughs> All the time. What, what was the last one that you converted? And I find it hard. Oh god, I don't know. I just, I just look at stuff and I think four dollars for that, and I'm like, okay, it's about two quid. Will I pay two quid for it? Like, no, no, but know. the thing is, though, now, I mean, don't get <laughs> me wrong. You went back six months ago, but if I was to compare the price of stuff, which, which I don't do now it took about six months to a year before I could stop doing this but if I was to compare the price of stuff in Australia and convert it to what it would be in the you UK buy it. well yeah but <laughs> I'm, I'm on three and a half year old prices like you know wars have happened that have shoved prices up yeah. in that time so it doesn't take a long time to outdate those kind of prices I no tell a lie I do do it sometimes when I want to justify why I should buy something I'm like oh, you oh. shouldn't be buying it yeah probably <laughs> but I think to myself, oh, that'd only be such and such if it was in the UK. That's a good deal. Because there mm. are some things in Australia that are genuinely cheaper. Mm. Coffee, for an example. Never used to drink coffee in the UK because it was so bloody expensive. Ain't but now, horrible. exactly. And now I look at the price of coffees in Australia and in dollars, even if it was just a straight conversion to pounds, it's cheaper here. Mm. And then I can half that or nearly half that mm. and it'd be what the UK equivalent would be. So it does work out better. But don't sit there because it's just, that's just another but stress. People isn't will. It? People will. It's a natural thing. You will. And I am getting better. Yeah. I am getting better um, at it. But it's the um, meat and veg yeah. as well that gets me. I'm When I go shopping, I, I don't really do much meat and veg shopping because I end up sending Ross pictures of, is this a good price? Is this a good price? Because you have to, it's all in kilos, Price per kilo as well, yeah. Price per kilo. I hate that. They don't... Just tell me how much that bit of broccoli is. Like, you can. So you just got to go and weigh it. and then Yeah, and then you've got to do your conversion. maths. And if you're not very good at maths, then you've got no chance, have you? <laughs> just go to, um, if, if this is a problem for you, <laughs> as well as paying the prices it's that... Stress. <laughs> as well as paying the prices that them, you know, price gouges, Coles and Woolies want to charge for fruit and veg and meat, just go to your, uh, particularly a local greengrocer, and they'll do the perfect for you. You go in there and you're like, oh, there's this whole bag of carrots or whatever, $2. Yeah, perfect. That's can, exactly how she that. likes to do it. They might be, you know, not necessarily exactly the freshest, but they look good now, and this is what <laughs> I'm going to eat this week. So as long as they last a week, but for $2, I don't really care. Rather than having to, yeah, I've got a small bit of broccoli in the you go to Coles or Woolies, you know, this, this is $5. Mm. No, I can get a whole bag, mate. And I know exactly how much that bag was. Yes. Uh, but what did you tell me? Anything under $4 a kilo. No, this, this piece of advice was given oh. to me by, by like a comment on the channel. They oh. said anything $4 or less, around about $4 a kilo for a fr fruit and veg is a good price or something. It normally okay. means it's in season yeah. um, because, again, seasonality will change and grapes will go from about $4 a kilo to $40 a kilo or something stupid. But oh, I don't actually know how heavy... A kilo is. A kilo is. It's like, a so kilo I is a kilo. I can't, yeah, but I can't compare it to... If it says, okay, this is $4 for this kilo of bananas, Yeah. I know it will depend on the size of the bananas. Yeah, well, you just pick it up and you're like, mm, that feels like a kilo. Yeah, but I don't know what that feels like. Well, go and get like a kilo dumbbell from Kmart, mate, and you can just carry that around with you. <laughs> Would that be four bananas? Would that be a kilo? It depends on the size of the well, banana. <laughs> <laughs> a kilo is a kilo. Oh, well, yeah. It's I, like, I, how much does a kilo of feathers weigh, mate? A, a kilo, but a kilo of feathers dyslexic, is like this. Really dyslexic. And and really struggles, or and has um, what's the other one? Discalculator. Discalculator. Yeah, yeah, I have that one too. It's yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. A kilo is a kilo. Just mate. send Ross shopping. Now this one 
cost me, you don't even know this, this one probably cost me about $3,000. And it's, I didn't even, partly because I didn't even know it, what it was and how it worked. But superannuation in Australia is their version of like a pension. I think the, the whole system is better, fundamentally because your employer pays most of it um, and you can contribute to top it up. But you can also choose which superannuation fund you want, which could best suit your needs, could be more appropriate to the type of job you do. But I, I didn't look into what it was and how it worked. Yeah at all and the reason why it cost me probably about three thousand dollars is because and again this was a mistake of mine i didn't put in on my superannuation fund my correct tax file number i think i missed out a couple yeah. of digits yeah. and then what happened when it got to the end of the year was and I did, again i didn't even notice this because i didn't realized that I had to do it because my tax file number was incorrect. Essentially, I had put all this money into my superannuation without the correct tax file number. And then the ATO decided that they wanted to tax me at a higher rate because they thought I didn't have a tax file number. And I didn't realize this until way past any dates that I would have needed to do it. And then, yeah, I lost a few thousand dollars in extra tax. <sighs> I look at it though, because obviously if I'd have lost $3,000 out of my wallet, I would feel really, really stressed. But I look at it as though, you well... You did last night when your wallet went through the washing machine. Well, was that my fault? <laughs> yeah, because you didn't check your pockets. Because I didn't check my pockets, yeah. you wanted to wash it for me. Yeah. Thanks. Good job there wasn't any cash in it. <laughs> it would have been fine though, because Australian cash is all plasticky and uh. it probably would have been fine. That superannuation money is money that I'm not going to see until I'm much, much older. So, and it wasn't really my money anyway, because the employer gave it to me. So that's the only thing I'm holding on to that that's why I didn't. How much would that $3,000 be worth at the end of the lifetime of my superannuation agreement? Yeah, I don't want to think about it, mate. Mm. But look into what superannuation is. How does it work? Which one is the best for you? Make sure you put in the correct tax file number. Do you even know what superannuation is yet? Well, I've got one. <laughs> I've got one, but I, I don't know if it's the right one for me. Because they actually, my employer either asked... Which one what is your one, one I want. Or they nominate one for or you. Or they nominate one. Yeah. So I just went with what they nominate because I didn't know. So I'm going to probably then make a, a video about yeah, superannuation coming up soon. And I'm going to use Samantha Perfect. As, the, uh, as the guinea pig to show you what potentially you so could you do. you can find me a different one. Good, great. I'll probably end up just moving into the same one as I'm on. <laughs> what are you on? Mm. <laughs> Mine's the oh, super, Australian Retirement Fund. Never heard of it, mate. Yeah, we'll look into it. Again, no financial advice because I'm nothing to do with that but no. at least you'll learn a bit more about super because we knew nothing yeah if you're sitting here watching this and you are from another country and you're considering moving to Australia the biggest mistake and this far supersedes all of the ones that we've talked about the biggest mistake I think that we made even if it was just a, a more temporary thing we should have made the move to Australia sooner I think we left it too long what do you think yeah we did but I don't know like when you first met me you told me my dream is to move to Australia I am going to move to Australia and that was how many years ago I don't know we were like 22 yeah 15 years ago probably like that yeah. and I'm like okay great we're not going to be together very long because I'm not moving and uh, you know ever since then you, you've gone on and on and on <laughs> about it and I just keep brushing it aside oh yeah yeah we'll do it we'll do it and yeah so you mm. you wanted to move you know within your early 20s mid 20s didn't you and then um i kind of i was so fed up of him talking about it i was like well i i wouldn't move anyway because you haven't committed to me so there's no no way i would move and i think that's fair yeah. and you agreed didn't yeah. you um i hope you didn't just propose to me because you wanted to come here though surely the easier <laughs> way if i wanted to come here and i didn't you want to be with you i've just, just gone yeah exactly so <laughs> Um, yeah, so I kind of thought, well, I want that security, really. Mm -hmm. And I think I was right and fair to say that. So, yeah. So that's what we did first. And I said, look, let's let's get married first. Let's sort that out. Mm. Because I don't want to be getting married over here. Because then all my family all and your family and... are all there. We'd have probably I, I, gone you back. You know, your mum and dad, I know, had to travel from the Philippines. Um, Can you imagine that, but... getting married, if we'd have been in Australia, mm. but then gone back to the UK so that those friends family could have been part of it mm. but then what about all of our australian friends that we just kind of made yeah that would have been difficult yeah exactly so i think what we did then was right yeah maybe you should have proposed sooner 
Like, maybe it's all your fault. Yeah, no, I'll take, I'll it, take that. It was quite yeah. a long time I had to wait. Yeah. It was. <laughs> bloody long. I just couldn't make up my mind, And then mate. we wanted kids, and we were like, oh, God, time's ticking, time's ticking, you know? Yeah. When you kept saying we need to be in before we're, what, 35, did you say? 32? 30, 32, oh, 32, I needed to apply because that was the cutoff for points. Yeah. So I, I think this, is, this, this whole story illustrates it perfectly in the sense mm. that the longer you leave it, yep. it doesn't make it any it easier. easier. Yeah. And hindsight's a beautiful thing because we can look back and go, oh, we should have done it earlier. And, and still, I think we should have done it earlier. Yeah. But Everything I, else we should have done earlier. Yeah. Marriage and then, earlier, kids a bit earlier. Yeah. And, and we just look at the whole, what could we have done instead of if our lives were here as opposed to being in the UK? Because I, I just think to myself, well, we, we gave the UK life a bloody good go. Yeah. But we just got to the stage of thinking, well, if this is as good as it's going to get, I, I don't really want this. And I want to try and see if what it would be like somewhere else from a lifestyle perspective and how we can live our lives. You only get one go at this. Yeah. Don't kid yourself by thinking, I'll put it off, I'll do it next year, I'm going to do it at this date. Because even goalposts change, you know, skills lists change, requirements change. Australia at the moment is now making it more difficult for people to move here because they cap the numbers of migrants. Don't leave it yeah. any longer than you need to. Start the process, definitely, the visa process. Because mm. how long did it take the visa to come through? Well, there, there's the point. So we got married when, what, we were 29, 30? And that's when we started it. Because, again, I waited mm. to for us to get married so that we it would be easier from a partner perspective because that's that's oh, your proof. Yeah. And then... And then yeah. we had to put it on hold because I fell pregnant. I couldn't have all the, the medicals. medicals done because... So that yeah. made it longer. Yeah. The whole process from start to finish probably took from me first looking at getting a visa agent to start it yeah best part of three years mm, yeah. so if you like this longer style of videos where you know Sam just doesn't shut up or perhaps I don't even shut up because I love to waffle on as well and you love us sharing the more candid style of what our life is like in Australia make sure you leave us a comment down below and if you want to see our last video together where we did waffle on for quite a bit because that was the last when you went to um, the UK but didn't I have a glass of wine bottle of wine Mate, it's not even 12 o'clock I've got nothing today see you soon bye 50 minutes <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.